hey, audio and video at the same time. So tray one of this batch, this is going to be a big batch of Biddle Honeys. So got the Biddle Honeys, and then these are what they looked like after some samples were freeze dried. So this is one that got cut lengthwise, and then this is cut across, and then this is a quarter of one. So after it's cut lengthwise, then I cut it this direction. So I'm going to do a variety of shapes on this tray. And then tray two will be a little bit different because I need to, uh, well, I'm going to do it so that I can show it on video better. So we'll be back when this tray is finished. Some of them cut in half lengthwise. So these are halves and these are halves the other direction. And then little quarter pieces and a few whole ones at the front. A couple more full ones back here. But the full ones don't really do as well because they're just so big you have to kind of have them in a couple of bites which makes a mess. So I'm going to do some more of the smaller ones on here. And I can cut them into thirds also this direction. That seems to work pretty well too. All right. So finish filling this one up and fill the other two up and then we'll go over to the freeze dryer and put them in. We got to make a little adjustment on one of the racks before I put this one in. Before that we'll, sh we'll weigh them and so I'll mark down the weights of these as they sit on the trays. We'll get the weight on these and with these I'm not going to bother with thermometers because there's really no place to put them. So 955, so 200 grams of the Biddle Honeys on there. 960 and 989. Okay, so get the freeze dryer ready to put these in. Oh, we'll meet you over there. So to get this one ready, I'm going to move the one shelf up out of the way a little bit for better view of for video. And that makes it a little bit difficult. I'm not sure what size uh, socket that was. So it would have been easier if I'd have done it when it's not running because it's ridiculously icy cold in there. All right. So then I'm going to raise that one up. And get this other side. All right. That opens up this space so I can see better with the camera onto that tray as they freeze dry. Okay, so get that back into place. So oh, we'll get those in there. All right. So tray four. You can see how it gives me quite a bit of extra room in here to see in there with the camera. It makes the top one very, very snug, but it's fine. Okay, and it'll take a little while before the frost on this goes away. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down a little bit, make sure it's pretty clean. Especially up here where the camera will be. And that's the inside of that is already frosting up. You can see ice on the seal right here. Okay, I'll get that. Looks like we've got a seal ring around there already. And it'll take a little while, but you can see it's already starting to get more clear and it'll get more clear as time goes on before it starts. Right now it's set for almost three and a quarter more hours of freeze time before it starts freeze drying. It probably doesn't need anywhere near that because there's just almost no moisture in that. But I do want to give it some time to make sure that this, the barrel, uh, the chamber gets back down to 40 below before it starts. And again, I don't know how necessary that is either for these candies. There's so little moisture, but I do want to capture the moisture if I can before it goes through the pump because I have the oil tight pump. 
Okay, we'll come back and check it when that's cleared up. We can get the camera up against there. So this is how I light that one tray. So I've lifted the shelf up above it and then I tape this small light to the door and then I'll move the camera into this spot right here to see right in there. And then we'll cover the whole thing with a piece of black cloth to keep the reflections off the plastic. Otherwise it really ruins the picture. So the camera is going to end up right here and then the black fabric will cover it to keep any of the reflections out. But we'll give it another couple hours that will help get rid of some of that frost on the inside as the pressure lowers. This is the setup I use for getting video through the front door of the freeze dryer. So I use this black velvet over the whole camera and light thing to keep the reflections off the plastic. So it looks like they're already about done, uh, but I'm going to leave them overnight. I'm going to go ahead and take the light out because I don't need that anymore. The camera is done. So I'm going to go ahead and bypass all of the rest of the time and take them out and check them and put them back in. Uh, they've only been in there for a few hours, but candy things don't really have a lot of water and don't really need a lot of time. It's been a total of less than 10 hours, including the pre-freeze part, which wasn't really much of a problem because it was already so cold. So I'm going to go ahead and bypass all of the rest of that. Well, they didn't seem to collapse or anything, so that's interesting. Hey, okay. and tray one, and it's hard to get tray one out when it's in there like that. It's nice and toasty. So tray one, let's see if they changed any. Oh, it changed a little bit, 943. So it's down 12 grams. All right, that looks great. Tray two. So that's down 16 grams. Tray three, 948. And tray four, 976. All right, so I just put them all back in the same spots because they seem to be finished already, but I'm not prepared to do any I'm not prepared to do anything with them tonight so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it run for a bunch of hours overnight see if it changes any more weight I suspect they're already done because it just doesn't take that long okay so I'm gonna go ahead and add more time and I'll just add more time back on. So I gave it six more hours. Uh, it did say more than that, but I think they're already done. So this is just because I've got nothing else to do with it and I don't want to take care of bagging them tonight or doing anything with them tonight. So I might as well just leave it, leave it set there. So now it's the next day. Uh, it's had a chance to rewarm for like three hours because I had other things I needed to do. And now we'll take them out and reweigh them, see if it lost any weight from last night. If it did, we'll put it back in. But they probably were done a long time ago. I think you could probably get two or three batches in a day by having it pre-cooled all the way down. Don't shut it off and just put it in there maybe even for just more dry time uh, each time, which would be an interesting experiment to find out about these, which we will probably do later. So right now, we'll bypass the rest of the time and get them out. So you can see we owe the universe pressure again, uh, but I'll bypass the rest of the time and we'll check them. 
Open the drain valve. Get the scale on. Okay, so tray one is the one tucked into the very top. And they don't look like they've changed at all after those first few hours. Okay, let's see if there is any difference. Actually, it is two more grams. So in eight hours, it's had about two grams. Um, yeah, so 941, and that's eight hours. Okay, it's probably still not an issue I'm going to worry about. So tray two, 10, 10. So that's five grams, but again, eight hours. We'll consider those. Tray three, three grams, so 945 minus, so it's dropping down one. And tray four, 972. Okay, so I'm going to put the disc in place and consider this. Okay, I'm going to reclose that while we consider this. Hmm. So considering the weight loss before and then the weight loss now, I wish I'd had a time in between there to check them, but I think they're very, very safe to come out. I'm going to call that good and we'll get the, we don't really know the time. Um, we know how long it was before. So it was a total of 18 hours of time that it was in the freeze drying mode. And that includes the freezing time at the beginning. So I think we could use 18 hours as the time, but I think it would take less than that. Okay, so I'm going to make sure we've got a ring around there and leave it chilling for the next batch. Uh, whatever that batch is, is going to need pre-frozen and there's so little ice in there, there's no reason to defrost it. So I'm going to use the pallet knife to get that seal ring around there again. Okay, so I'm going to use 18 hours as the time that it took, even though it says uh, 22 and a half hours, but there was a good portion of that when it was sitting and waiting. Uh, so it wasn't doing any freeze drying process. So I'll back it up to 18 hours and it's probably considerably less than that. It just didn't check it in between there. So we'll get the power usage and get ready for whatever's next. Okay. Oh, it switched to 0 0.01. Well, I looked at it a second ago and it was 11.00. So the power usage for this batch is 11 kilowatt hours even. So we'll get it reset and ready for the next batch. We'll check to see if how many would fit on a tray because this was two pounds in this batch and the question is can you do three pounds or four pounds in the medium one? That would suggest you could do four. So we'll do this to all the trays, combine it and find out how much we could have done as a single layer and hopefully they wouldn't stick together. Tray two, yep, 10, 10. And tray three, this is bouncing back and forth between 944 and 945. I think I'll go with the 944 because that way we might have extras that we have to eat. 970, I'm gonna take the lower one of the two because it keeps going back and forth. Now, Let's figure out the weight of those net weight now, find out how much it lost, and figure out how much is practical. Well, this one's less than a half left over. And I don't know if they would stick together. They didn't seem like they were sticky at all. 
beforehand uh, before they're dried so I don't think it's a big problem so there's n I think there's no way you'd get four full pounds in there without having them on top of each other you could definitely get three because that would be this much plus half again so you could definitely get three you probably get three and a half four is going to be pushing it so that's a whole one that's a half of one cut lengthwise and these are half cut the other direction across and then you've got quarter ones okay so each one of those little piles would be one full bit of honey kind of cool volume wise the whole ones get well I guess that's about right I think it's a little bit more volume than that but these are messy to eat all of these I think would be great and personally I think oh okay so almost all of these would actually be thirds not halves so it would be three of these so some of these bigger ones on this tray were probably halves but on these trays most of these would be thirds not halves so again I think those are like the perfect size oh wait a minute yep perfect size oh we should check it to see if there's any spots in the middle oh, if we had a knife if only we had a knife and the razor sharp knife oh those are beautiful inside so you that's neat those just snap so nicely that's that is nice okay so we get the weights on them and find out how we're going to bag them we have we're not intending these to be stored long term these are going to be given away or used right away so we're using these bags which are clear on one side and then the silver and gold uh, foil mylar on the other side so it's still a zipper bag and they were a gusseted bottom bag they were a gusseted bottom bag but the bottom seam is poorly done the back edge of this is not sealed well enough so we got these as an experiment but never really used them um, but this seam in the back is not good enough so on these we simply cut it off and then resealed it with a double seal at the bottom and so it's much better and it's a better size for snack kind of things anyway um, I got nothing else on that so the total on the bit of honey is got the gross weights here and then the weight of the trays with the parchment then I subtract that out and that gives you the net weight before they're freeze dried that was 941 grams then afterwards <clears throat> the same thing the gross weight after is freeze dried and then subtract out again the tray weight and that gives you the net weight after it's been freeze dried now it lost a total so then I can take that total of the before subtract the total net weight afterwards that gives me that it lost 69 grams for this amount that's about seven percent uh, just barely over seven percent of the weight has been lost okay now we'll figure out how many we're going to put in there for bagging we could obviously go with any amount we're thinking maybe a 20th uh, so we'll weigh out a 20th of and see what that looks like so and for these there's no reason that these have to stay separate at this point 
So I'm going to go ahead and combine them and see how much, how close it comes to being able to fit on two trays in a single layer, preferably. So judging from that, it, it, this would have been four pounds. I mean, this would be two pounds, so doubling it would be four pounds. So I don't think you could, well, you couldn't get four pounds on the four trays, but you could get maybe three and a half pounds. So you can get quite a lot of them on there. And if you don't mind if they touch or stack up as they freeze dry, it may not even be that much of an issue. So you might be able to go four pounds. But three and a half, definitely. So now we'll figure out how we're gonna bag them and be right back with that. Okay, let's see what that looks like. 43.6 would be 1 20th. That's 42.7. Let's try one of these little guys. 44. So that's just barely over a 20th. So that's not very much. I'm going to try a 12th. See what that looks like. You want to see what it looks like in there? Yeah. Okay. So let's see what it looks like in one of those. Sitting there eating it. Okay. So that definitely works. You could easily get that in a flat layer in the bag. Want to do some of them that way? Yeah. You want to do all of them that way? At least some of them. Because you could always open two bags. Well, what would the 12th be? Let's okay. try a 12th and see what Let's it Let's see like. what the 12th looks like. Let me write down the 20th. Okay. So it'd be that much would be a 12th. So there's a 20th and a twelfth. The only reason I'm saying twelfth is because I already have twelve <laughs> bags labeled. Uh, so that would be the advantage of doing twelfth. 20, 22, 23, about 23 pieces. I mean they're smallish but it's still that'd be like eating five of these whole ones. No, okay so we want to go with twentieths? Yeah. Okay so I'm going to And going for the 43. So aiming for about 43 uh, plus or minus a little, but I want to average about 43. Ta-da! So it'll be plus or minus a little bit. Okay, so we're going to bag it in 20ths. So that amount um, is enough for a trial. And for these, we're going to use those little 50 cc oxygen absorbers that we got accidentally. So we'll use those up because with these just being sugar, uh, there's really no need for an oxygen absorber, but it certainly won't hurt in case we do end up stay keeping one for a year or something. I don't imagine they'll last that long. One of the nice things about these bags is they look gorgeous. The product isn't going to last as long. These are not for long-term storage, but for a gift where you know they're going to use it soon, these are beautiful. And there's absolutely no need to weigh these. You could just be throwing hands full in. Um, Boy, I just realized that I'm so used to, Wait. well, in manufacturing things, you know, in food industry, they have to weigh within plus or minus. And so I'm in that mode. And for this purpose, you don't really need to do that. You could just throw in hands full of them. And when it feels like the right amount to you, stop. Yeah, you don't even have to own a scale. I highly recommend it for checking to make sure they're dry though. Other than that, uh, the scale is less important really. Even with rehydrating. If you, if it's a soup, rehydrate it till it's soupy enough. 
If it's applesauce, rehydrate it till it's applesauce. Rehydrate it the way you want it and then use it that way. You don't have to have a scale. You don't have to weigh the water. You don't have to do the math to find out how much water it lost. The biggest use for the scale is to check to see if it's dry. Because once it's lost, once it's stopped losing weight, you can be pretty confident it's dry. And if it's still losing weight, I can guarantee you it's not dry which is even more important. If it's not dry, don't put it in the bag. Unlike the gusseted bottom ones, these don't stand up. I can't believe we used to use the non-gusseted ones. It's been about three years though that we've been using the gusseted bottom ones. Yeah. Wow, they're so much nicer. And now I understand why when people were doing these a lot before, they would have little holders. Uh, I think some people used like taco shell holders and wire rack kind of things uh, I can understand it because they just they don't stand up without that other bottom piece we're going to use the little 50 cc oxygen absorbers in these because these are basically sugar things they don't really need an oxygen absorber at all as far as preservative but it still could help uh, retain the flavor because you would still have oxygen in there oxidizing the sugars it just doesn't happen as well without the water involved with it. But we'll add these in there and then zipper them shut and then heat seal them. We're going to try to heat seal them above this rip tab, but below that dot. So there's one spot in between there that it's a perfect fit. Sometimes it's hard to hit though. Uh, if anything, you could still go at an angle but if you leave one of these available, it helps for opening the bag later. Okay, so we'll get these in there and there should be perhaps the exact right amount. And the little oxygen sensor is already turned and this kind is slower than these little dot kind. Those really do well. Okay. So we'll put one in each one and then zipper it shut. That way it can start doing its magic without pulling in more air. And I'm not going to really worry about squishing out too much extra air because it's kind of hard to and takes time. And for these, it's just, I don't really, I'm not really too worried about them. Another nice thing about having the clear fronts is you'll be able to tell if you've got an oxygen absorber in it. I've had that before where you end up with one, you think one is missing because the bag of oxygen absorbers had 11 instead of 10. You have to go looking through them all again to make sure you got them. With this, with these clear ones, it's easy to see. These bags are thinner, so I turned it down a little bit. Usually I'm at six or six and a half. This, on these bags, I'm turning it down to five and I may need to turn it down a little bit more after I do a few. Now, to get it at the right spot, if I hold the bag over the seal, then I can see where the tabs are and I can see that they're on this side of the heat strip and I can see that the hole's on that side of the heat strip. Uh, so by holding it over it, it's real easy to get it in the right spot. Yeehaw! Okay. Yeah, let it... Okay. A nice wide five millimeter wide seal. It looks like it's sealed very well. And I can still use those tear off little points to tear the top off of when it's time to snap those bad boys. That looks nice. I think that's a good amount. I, I wouldn't have had a problem with going with some other amount, but there's certainly no need to. I mean, that's. Well, for two people, that's a and healthy snack even. Look, 
three for 20 bucks. That's about the amount that I'm, I was thinking I was seeing. Yeah, but the pictures I saw were very little. Well, the pictures, if the phone was screen small. Uh -huh. And blow it up this big, it'll look like car tire. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think it was that kind of volume. I mean, I could be wrong without seeing it in person and without knowing exact if they'd have held it in their hand so I could make sure the bag size, size because it might not have even been this big a bag. Our best chance would be to get the little ring ones, freeze dry them, put them in a bag so we could see it. I'm thinking it was about this size bag, but they were gusseted also. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why they might not have been as big as these were. I don't think, I don't think it was this big. I think it was like this, but gusseted. So you put that and seal it at this level. And I think that's what it looked like to me, but it's impossible to tell. Okay, so got the first one sealed. Uh, whoa, so it's just simply a matter of going to seal each one of them by holding it over the seal strip with the little rip tabs on this side of it and the hole on the other side. And as soon as these are done, they can be um, put in mailing boxes and sent away or snacked like crazy. Anyway, so that's all on these. There's nothing more that's going to be happened to these. Not even going to add a gross weight on the bags because these simply won't be around that long and it just won't matter. So we've got the label on it with the batch number, what it is, and the date. I didn't put a weight of what it was before, but for our use on these sugar items, there's just no point to putting more information because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll see on the next one. Uh, the freeze dryer is already cold because we didn't have to defrost it, so it's ready for the next thing. We'll find out what that is in a while. Right now it's set for almost three and a more. Hey, Kathy, Richard, Mike, check your mailbox. Could be there. 